and Mercedes Khan has accused Wandsworth Council of waving through a drastic cut in the number of affordable homes at Battersea Power Station, calling it shameful and unscrupulous. Last month, the council rubber-stamped a move by the developer to cut the number of affordable flats to 386. That's a 40% reduction from the original plans. The Malaysian developers say rising costs and economic uncertainty have disrupted the luxury homes market and they expect to achieve less than half of the original returns. Jason Rosam is at the power station this morning. Jason, good morning. And good morning to you, Vanessa. Yeah, and I'm looking up at the chimneys, which have been restored. They weren't there for a while, but they're back now. Uh, those famous four chimneys of Battersea Power Station up again at this £9 billion development. I think most Londoners uh, welcomed the move to redevelop it because it's been sitting here a dormant for uh, 30 years. And uh, a lot of people welcomed it when it was announced a few years ago. A lot of money going in, a lot of homes being built. But as you say, Wandsworth Council allowed this uh, 686 affordable homes. Only 686 were going to be here at Battersea Power Station. Wandsworth Council allowing this to be reduced by 40% to only 386. It means just 9% of the homes built will be classed as affordable. Properties uh, at the site start at about £460,000 for a studio flat, rising to about £1.9 million for a three-bedroom flat when this is all finished here. The development will have about 4,200 uh, properties, but uh, we've had this stumbling block now on affordable homes. And Sean Berry, the Green Party London Assembly member, joins me here at the power station this morning. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. What would you have done if you won the mayoralty? Uh, what would you have said to the developers and Wandsworth Council? Well, I think the mayor's been a bit um, a bit dishonest here about the extent to which he could have intervened here. I mean, he, we haven't heard a peep from him until the decision's basically already been made by Wandsworth Council to accept this reduction. But he's known about this since late March. Uh, that's when the application went in. Um, although, you know, strictly, because Boris didn't call in the application to hear himself, Sadiq is not the decision maker. Uh, he could have created the kind of fuss he's creating now much, much earlier. He could have legally challenged the decision by Wandsworth Council to treat this as not a change, not a new application. They treated it as a what's called a deed of variation to the agreement, uh, which is which means they don't have to publicly consult. Can he um, still do that? Can he still take them to court? No, because it's. I mean, the decision's been made. I mean, potentially within six weeks, you can bring a judicial review against this, um, and maybe he should be thinking about that. But I think in terms of uh, the fact that he's getting a lot of publicity out of this, the fact that he's making a fuss, he could have done that a lot earlier. And Wandsworth would have found it much more difficult to make the decision if the de if they were being challenged by the Mayor of London. He has a lot of political clout. He could also have sent in his uh, viability team um, who are looking at applications and actually are getting more affordable housing out by looking properly at the profits developers are making. And the developers here are looking at making more than 20% profit. Um, this idea that they are not going to make a profit out of this, that this is the reason they have to cut the affordable housing. I've seen figures that say that the original 1.8 billion profit they were going to make is now up to 2.4 billion. That's a huge amount of money. And the idea that they have to cut the, the paltry number of affordable, house, uh, affordable homes they were going to provide is absolutely outrageous. But isn't it up to the developers? And Wandsworth Council are very concerned because uh, the developers are actually paying for some of the tube station, which is just over the road here, the new Battersea tube station on the Northern Line. They're paying for that. And they're also... Um, they're worried that the development will just come to a halt. So they had to do something. I think I think the uh, developers were holding them a little bit to ransom here. Um, don't forget that the public are putting in the vast majority of money for the new tube line extension, which is going to benefit the developers absolutely hugely um, in terms of the house prices they can sell things for. So they're getting a very, very good deal in the first place. They were allowed 15% affordable housing uh, in this development, and they want to cut it to nine. This is something that I think the Mayor of London, you know, housing is his major thing. It was the absolute major issue in the in the London elections last year. Um, he's missed a trick or two here in the ways that he could have challenged ones with council. Have we have we any idea what affordable home actually means yet? Well, in this case, we are mainly talking about uh, affordable, with inverted commas, uh, homes for sale. Um, and that means you know, shared ownership. It means slightly reduced costs uh, for a small number of people. And then afterwards, it goes straight back onto the uh, regular market. Market. So it's a one-time thing. We're not even getting that much out of this developer. Would you prefer that council so housing or some other type of social housing was built here in Battersea Power Station and the majority of it was affordable? I mean, look at the amount of land that we, we have here. The idea that there shouldn't be new council homes on at least some of this
this land when we've got an enormous housing crisis. I just don't think precious London land should be used to give developers 20% profits. There are plenty of not-for-profit developers out there. There's plenty of financing that is happy with a, a secure long-term return. We've got pension funds willing to invest in community-led housing, and that is what our land should be used for. Not-for-profit, huge profits from big developers who are just going to try and get out of their, um, their requirements anyway. Well, it was a big issue at the London mayoral election. It's still a big issue uh, now. And last year, Wandsworth Council say that they delivered the second highest number of affordable homes for Netsa among all the 33 London boroughs and that they would never accept a potential reduction in low-cost homes unless the case was overwhelming. They're saying the mayor of London, he was asked to engage in this decision-making process several weeks ago, but remained completely silent until the day before the committee uh, went and made uh, the... Um, the decision and then launched a social media campaign rather than contacting the council. Do you recognise that, Sean? Yeah, I think that is that is kind of what the mayor did. Um, he did have the opportunity to respond. Uh, the council did write to the GLA to say what they were going to do and the GLA did not respond before the decision was made in writing. The mayor has made a lot of fuss but he hasn't done anything official in his official capacity to deal with this. Well, we'll be talking to Labour councillor of uh, this ward in uh, Battersea, Iden Dickerdom, a little later on in the show, Vanessa.